yippee ki movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm explaining how Pixar's new movie Soul proves the theory that all the studio's films take place in an interconnected universe. I'll also show you how Soul explains the Toy Story movies, where the Incredibles get their powers, and the origins of the magical doorways in Monsters Inc. and Brave. Plus I'll explain how the new film fits in with Inside Out and Coco. Of course there'll be some spoilers, so take care. John Negroni first introduced the idea of a single Pixar timeline, and it's in Soul's The Hall of Everything, where we can find especially compelling evidence to confirm Negroni's theory. The hall is overflowing with specific objects and locations which often recur in Pixar's films, from the iconic Pizza Planet truck to the blimp from Up, and even the weirdly shaped rock called Willy's Butte from the Cars movies. And that's a huge pointer that the movies exist in the same universe. But Soul goes even further than this, because even though the film appears to be set roughly in the present day, which I'm basing on the look and feel of New York and the cell phone Joe uses, the hall of everything even has objects from the future, such as the Axiom from Wally, one of a fleet of giant starliners that wasn't used until 2105, when by and large arranged for the evacuation of the Earth. This implies that the Hall of Everything may even contain blueprints or at least the inspiration for events that are still to come in the future of the Pixar universe. Soul also demonstrates one of the most important concepts at the heart of Negroni's Pixar theory, that humans are batteries. The idea is that human beings are a source of energy to sentient objects such as the toys in Toy Story, which is why they crave the love of their owners, otherwise it's suggested that if the toys end up stored away they lose their life. And in Monsters Inc, we know that technology exists that can harvest energy from human emotions such as fear or joy. And there are several moments in Soul that strongly support this idea of humans as an energy source. When Joe is on the elevator that leads to the great beyond, he notices that as the souls of the recently deceased float up into the big bright light, they fizzle and crackle like an electrical charge. As if to reinforce this idea that a soul is a form of energy, there's also an electrical crackle sound effect whenever we see Terry counting souls on her abacus. Joe also discovers in The Great Before that before new souls can take their place on Earth, they not only have to acquire a set of personalities, but they also need what the movie calls a spark to complete that personality. Without this spark, theoretically a soul isn't allowed to go to Earth and live a human life. 22 does end up on Earth by accident, but the general rule is that a spark is needed to complete the Earth pass which a soul needs to live a life. The word spark can of course mean a number of things, such as a burst of electricity or an intense feeling or emotion, which again points to this idea of human beings as a form of energy or batteries even. Another crucial element of Negroni's Pixar theory is the idea that Boo from Monsters Inc. travels back in time to become the witch in Brave. I'll get to how Soul supports this idea shortly, but first let's quickly recap what the theory says about time travel. Brave is set in 10th century Scotland, whereas given the monster's advanced technology, Monsters Inc. takes place in the future. The clearest evidence which suggests time travel is the wood carving of Sully that the witch has in her cottage. She's also obsessed with bears, which could be her way of expressing the strong friendship she made with Sully in Monsters, Inc. On top of that, the witch has carvings of the Pizza Planet truck, which should be impossible given that motorised vehicles most definitely didn't exist in medieval Scotland. And she's carved parodies of famous art by artists from the future like Michelangelo. The door to the witch's cottage is also magical, and can transport her into an alternate interior version of her hut, and it can also make her disappear. This is because Boo learned how the technology of the portal doors at the Monsters Inc. factory worked, which is how she travelled through time and space. Crucially in Soul, we can see this same technology in the U Seminar. After souls are paired up with their mentor, Jerry conjures up a door and sends them through it, instantly transporting them to another location. And when Jerry gives Joe his second chance to return to Earth, he passes from the Great Beyond through a door and emerges on Earth through another door. Given the Great Before existed at the beginning of time, it suggests that the technology for magical portals in the Pixar universe was originally born there. 
Sol also makes a sneaky possible reference to Boo's time travel shenanigans in what initially appears to be a throwaway line by one of the Jerrys. When Terry turns up to complain that the count is out by one soul, Jerry replies, I seriously doubt that. The count hasn't been off in centuries. This is a vital piece of information for Pixar theorists because it tells us that an anomaly similar to Joe escaping the elevator that was taking him to the great beyond has happened previously, several hundred years ago in fact. To understand what may have happened all those centuries ago, let's look at what happened when Joe's soul accidentally fell into the body of Mr. Mittens. Why am I in a cat? I don't know! It seems that Mr. Mitten's soul was sent off to the great beyond, so what if Boo did a similar thing when she time travelled to medieval Scotland? Could she have landed in the body of a Scottish woman and displaced her soul sending it up to the great beyond? That would mean there'd be an extra soul in the afterlife without a corresponding dead body on Earth, which could be the reason for the count being off as Jerry said. Interestingly, when Joe returns to his body and soul, Mr. Mittens appears to regain his original soul too, as we see him reunite with his owner. So, if my theory about Boo and the witch's soul is correct, it makes me wonder whether Terry did anything about the anomaly that occurred in the soul count hundreds of years ago. By the way, it's worth pointing out that there's also a brave Easter egg in Soul during the video at the U Seminar, when we see a soul find its spark after it successfully shoots an arrow into the centre of one of three targets, referencing Merida's demonstration of archery skills when she fired arrows into three targets. And there are, of course, many more Pixar Easter eggs in Seoul, including the Chinese takeout box, A113 and the Luxo Ball, all of which I reveal in my full Easter eggs video. Now, there are two Pixar movies, Inside Out and Coco, which, on the surface, seem to contradict Soul and maybe pose a problem for how smoothly it fits into the interconnected universe of the Pixar theory. The first issue is to do with personality. In The Great Before, we discover that every soul acquires a set of personalities before they go to Earth. This is where personalities come from? Of course! Do you think people are just born with them? However, in Inside Out, personalities are formed whenever a new core memory is made. Each core memory powers a different aspect of Riley's personality. The islands of personality are what make Riley... Riley. While these ideas about personality may appear to be at odds with one another, they can be easily reconciled if we think of a newborn soul as having a baseline personality at birth, some of which adapts and changes as that person grows up and has different experiences. In fact, in Inside Out, we see that Riley loses her personalities when she experiences a traumatic event. However, these are later restored and new ones are also added as she grows up. So an individual's personality is clearly not something static or unchanging. Likewise, Sol also shows us how 22's personality changes as she experiences life on Earth. Something else we need to reconcile is how Coco's Land of the Dead fits with Sol's depiction of the Great Beyond. In Seoul, the afterlife is a relatively simple place, with an escalator that leads souls to a giant white light in the sky. This representation may be alluding to the idea that many people who report near-death experiences describe a tunnel with a bright light at the end that draws them towards it. Coco's spirit world, on the other hand, is complex and bursting with colours, with the Marigold Bridge forming a connection between the land of the living and the elaborate and complex land of the dead. Fear not, though, because we can resolve these differences by turning to Pixar's official The Art of Soul book, which describes the great beyond as a place beyond all that can be known, represented by a brilliant white light in a vast space. What lies beyond the light is all up to interpretation. As the book suggests, we can interpret what's beyond the bright light in our own way, and so we can see the land of the dead in Coco as a culturally specific vision of what the afterlife is, unique to people of Mexican heritage. This would also explain how Coco can have its own specific rules for its spirit world, such as allowing the dead to cross over to the land of the living one day each year. What's common to both Soul and Coco, though, is that the dead souls all retain the appearance and age they had at the time of their death, whereas in The Great Before, all the souls look more or less similar, likely because they haven't taken a human form yet. The sparks that a soul acquires may even explain where the supers in The Incredibles got their powers, could it be that the souls that ended up as superheroes were supercharged with extra powers by the spark they received in the great before? There is, after all, a statue of what looks like a caped hero on a plinth in the Hall of Everything. 
Maybe that statue is responsible for sparking the unfortunate idea of caped superheroes. Knock it! And this is just a fun idea, but could the soul that's being interviewed here for the youth seminar training video be the soul of Buddy Pine, aka Syndrome? I'm a manipulative megalomaniac who's intensely opportunistic. Oh, this one might be a handful. I bet that's Earth's problem. Perhaps Syndrome got his spark from that statue, because after all it was his cape that proved to be his ultimate undoing. And yes, Syndrome wasn't born with powers, but that statue might have inspired him to seek glory in whatever way he could. Or could that soul be Evelyn Dever, the master manipulator and evil tech genius from the second Incredibles movie? The soul's possibly female-sounding voice might also suggest this, although we know from 22 that a soul can change their voice to sound like any type of person. I could sound like this if I wanted to. Or sound like this instead. I could even sound like you. If you like either of these ideas, leave a thumbs up, or comment below with which other Pixar character you think this troublemaking soul could be. Now I want to thank our sponsor NordVPN for helping make this video happen. If you want to keep yourself safe and secure whenever you're online from spies and snoopers like Terry from the Great Beyond, you'll need to get yourself a trustworthy virtual private network. A VPN protects your privacy by encrypting your internet connection and preventing your internet service provider, the government or hackers, from knowing what websites you're visiting or reading your private messages. A VPN is also a powerful tool that helps you bypass geolocation blocks, so you can access content not available to view or censored in your country. Unlike many free VPNs, Nord works with Disney+, Plus, Netflix and Amazon Prime, and you can connect up to six devices at any one time, so you can secure all your laptops, computers, phones, tablets and even home router. Something we especially like about Nord is the super fast download speeds on its 5000 plus servers and how it uses new generation VPN technologies like WireGuard. On top of that, Nord has a no log policy, meaning it doesn't record or retain details of your online activity when you're connected to its service. With our exclusive seasonal offer, you can get a full four bonus months completely free and 68% off whenever you sign up for a two year plan. Just visit nordvpn.com slash flicks or tap the link in the video description to access the offer. This is one of the biggest deals of the year, so go visit nordvpn.com slash flicks for this limited time offer. Now do you have any more ideas on how Soul fits into the Pixar theory? And if you enjoyed any of my Soul theories, a thumbs up is hugely appreciated. You can also tap left to discover where all the other Pixar Easter eggs are in the movie, or tap right for something else you're sure to like. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee ki movie lovers!